So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Sorry, Very sir. Disturbing. No admittance. Last warning, sir. Over there! There's one of them! Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury. Only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I must admit the guard of Prewen impressed me. They must have spent years preparing their plan. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. 
She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. I'm just a doctor. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Econ he deserves to be. As you wish, my lord. Good. Now go. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die, and he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then? Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Understandably, you have questions. Very well, proceed. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson, to make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please, tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. 
What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the Reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. Sir, step away! Steady, boy! Ah! It's locked. A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing.
It's locked, all right. I should find another way to get into the neighborhood. I think this passage could lead me close to Aloysius Dawson's mansion. Don't you know better? Come 
run hot. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
respect. Ah! Louise's father was determined to find and save her. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh! <sighs> 
I have this thirst for blood. You London vampires are so weak! Disgusting asshole! Vampire or not, will never be a wife!
Miss Teasdale, are you all right? How do you know my name? Who are you? My name is Dr. Reed. I managed to track you down thanks to your father. So my father really was looking after me. This man, this vampire told me my father was dead. Is it true? I'm afraid so, miss. I'm so sorry for your loss. But you are free to go, as your abductor is no more. I suppose my jailer also killed my father, didn't he? Thankfully, he did not search your father's corpse, where I found his notes describing where he might find you. You should read them. I must find my father's body. He deserves a proper burial. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. You should return to a safer place. Thank you for your sympathy, Doctor. But I recently... Goodbye, Miss Teasdale.
Good evening, sir. May I ask you what you're doing here at this late hour? I'm conducting an investigation about the epidemic in this part of town. And who are you, sir? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. May I ask who you are and why all the questions? I'm Detective Inspector Charles Albright from Scotland Yard. And I don't find your answers convincing. What is a Pembroke doctor doing in the West End at this time of night? I work for the Ascalon Club. Here is my permit to go freely about the city. The Ascalon Club? You should have said so, sir. I must warn you, these streets are dangerous, and you'd better be careful. What can you tell me about this district? I'm the one asking questions, especially when there's a killer on the loose. What killer? I'm not going to discuss that with a civilian, sir. Haven't I told you about the investigation I'm conducting? Perhaps I could help you. All right, without giving you too much information, I'll tell you this. I'm convinced there is a homicidal maniac on the loose, using the epidemic to disguise his kills. And what about the epidemic? We both know the situation is critical, don't we, Doctor? Colleagues of mine die almost every day. Why are you investigating at night? Criminals rarely act in daylight, you know. But since you are also a night worker, have you noticed anything strange which requires police attention? I'd like to report a name, Inspector. Jeffrey McCullum. I'm afraid he's some sort of vigilante trying to recruit an army of angry citizens. Then I'll write the name down and transmit this intelligence to the appropriate office. Thank you, sir. What are you really doing here? I told you. I'm a detective inspector from Scotland Yard, investigating suspicious cases in the area. Do you work alone? Yes. The situation is difficult for the police. Many of us are sick. And since the summer strike, most men apply a work to rule on their patrols. What about the situation in the East End? Why are there no police there to protect the civilians? I know, it's a shame, but we just don't have enough men to cover the entire city. What are you investigating, exactly? Mr. Kimura has been murdered. Always the same injuries. Wounds to the neck and massive blood loss. I'll stick to my homicidal maniac theory. Tell me all you know about that homicidal maniac you're looking for. I'm not even sure there is only one. The wounds are always the same, but the modus operandi varies. Sometimes violent and brutal, sometimes precise and swift. How could different killers inflict the same wounds? That's my main problem. If my theory is correct, maybe we're facing a group of individuals sharing the same violent tendencies. Perhaps a sadist cult. Do you know anything in particular about a man called Aloysius Dawson? Who doesn't know the man? I think he intervened personally to put an end to the police strike of last August. What else can you tell me about him? Aloysius Dawson is exactly the kind of powerful and influential man who could commit murder and get away with it with just one phone call. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon.
It's locked. Jonathan Reed, at last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. My name is Usher. Usher Talltree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stole, to be precise. I'm really glad we met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me a truth. The cards told you to expect me? Yes, they can tell me everything. They told me that you have not taken another life since your poor sister died. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? I really don't know. I don't often go outside. And when I do, it's usually to quite distant destinations. So you see nothing in the stars for me? You're a poor fortune teller, then. Oh, I can tell you many things. But they will only concern you, not the city. For example, I know that you offered your sister the final rest she asked for. Do the cards speak of my Mary? No. It's the burning aura of guilt that precedes you everywhere you go. Read my fortune. You have been chosen, Jonathan. I see on you the mark of a strong being, so powerful it needn't even reveal its strength. Can you read the cards for me? Are you sure you want to know what they will reveal? Yes, I am. It will cost you 150 shillings. Here is the money. The Joker. A woman bent to obey and debase herself. A cruel gaze in the dark. A monster laughing at you. Tell me about yourself. What do you do here, besides turning cards in the middle of the night? I'm for most a charlatan. For a few, I'm a vampire. For you, I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. Some believe you to be a vampire. Who? The guard of Prewen, who else? For a time, they sent spies to observe my activities, and they even broke into my home to gather proof. Did they steal anything from you? A personal notebook they quickly took to their headquarters. All they had to do is to look at me. I'm aging. What better and definite proof that I'm not an immortal? Do you want your notebook back? If you ever find it, I'd be glad to have it back, of course. I do ask one thing, though. Do not read it, Jonathan. Some secrets are not meant to be revealed, even to immortals. For how long have you been a primate? It was 15 years last year. What do you make of Dr. Swansea? Edgar is a brilliant and dedicated man. A man of his time, sometimes a little muddled, but always looking for new paths and new concepts. Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. A 
Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander, yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. Guards never lie, but they are never easy to read. Thank you.